This video is brought to you by catbeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. Hey, how's it going, fellas? My name's Andy, and uh, before we start, I just want to say that it was really nice to see Derrick Rose drop 50. Um, I think that was a new career high, and uh, it was just so fun to watch that game, especially at a time where, you know, most people thought Rose was done. Also, a quick story. So in high school, I was watching the NBA, but I started slowly getting bored of it a little bit near the end. But when Derrick Rose really became good around like 2010, 2011, he really got me back into basketball. I'm pretty sure I watched like every single Bulls game that season. So yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that and I hope you enjoy the video. What kind of expectations do you set for yourself individually going into year three? It's high. The way I look at it within myself, why not? Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Why can't I be the best player in the league? I don't see why, why, why can't I do that? Um. Derek Rose, the youngest MVP in NBA history. A guy who, at one point, most people thought would still be dominating the league right now. Rose had an incredible amount of pure athleticism and explosiveness. Right when he came into the league, he was different from other rookies. He played the game like a veteran, he knew how to control the pace, he knew when to defer to his teammates, and he knew when he should take over a game. But he just had too much talent, too much skill, and too many bad landing habits for his body to handle. How's it going fellas, my name's Andy, and today we're gonna talk about arguably the biggest what if in NBA history. Prime Derrick Rose, a player who we all still talk about and still reminisce on how amazing he was. But after four knee surgeries in five years, he was never the same again. Rose was, and still is, one of the most popular players in the world. Even though his peak was relatively short, he had a drastic impact on the league. By the mid to late 2000s, everyone saw basketball becoming a perimeter dominated game. But Rose took it to another level. He was the beginning of the, quote, point guard era, where every team in the NBA started to value and look at the position differently. We've seen some dominant combo guards before, but Rose was different. He was bigger, he was stronger, he was more athletic and could finish at the rim over the best defenders in the NBA. Defensively, he was also really good, although part of it had to do with Coach Thibodeau's defensive scheme, where they would ice the pick and roll and force opponents to the baseline. Rose just had to be fast enough to force them there. Regardless, he was still a good one-on-one -on -one defender. The 2010-11 Bulls were an interesting team. Looking back, if you've never seen that season, you would think Rose carried a bunch of scrubs. Because nowadays, guys like Joe Kim Noah and Luol Dang are seen as a joke. But back then, they were pretty good. With that being said though, Boozer and Noah were both injured for like half the season, and yet Rose still led them to 62 wins. The best record in the entire league. It's upsetting that there are fans who really think he didn't deserve that MVP, and I'm guessing those fans never watched him in his prime. If you just look at his numbers, they don't look great. Well, they do look great, they just don't look like MVP numbers by today's standards. 25 points, 8 assists on a rather pedestrian efficiency aren't anything special. Also, in that season, you had guys like LeBron James putting up better raw stats and better advanced stats, and same with Dwight Howard. But stats are misleading, and winning MVP has a bunch of different criteria. Rose was the best player on the best regular season team. That's already enough to win the MVP. He led them to 62 wins with two of their starters missing half the season. They had a 38-year-old Kurt Thomas as their starting center for 37 games. They had Keith Bogans. He was a good defender and a decent shooter, but he started for 82 games and averaged fewer than 4 shots per game. He was probably the worst starting shooting guard in the entire league. The only other consistent contributor they had for the entire season was Luol Dang, who defended the opponent's best player, but offensively, he was still very inconsistent. Rose was basically their only option. He was seeing double teams every night. On top of that, narrative is important, and the narrative at the time was completely on Rose's side. Everyone hated LeBron because he joined the Heat and he was the enemy, and Dwight was great, but his team wasn't winning enough games. Rose definitely deserved that MVP. Nowadays, there are a ton of comparisons to prime Derrick Rose. Some are good, some are inaccurate, but I think the fact that there are still comparisons to him shows the huge impact that he had. 
I've seen guys like Russell Westbrook, Dennis Smith Jr., Colin Sexton, well, a lot of young athletic guys get compared to him a lot. Westbrook vs Rose has been a comparison for a while though. After Westbrook had his MVP season, it's been compared to Rose's MVP season. And I do think Westbrook's season was better individually. But if Rose had stayed healthy during his actual prime, I think he'd be better than Westbrook. Maybe not stats-wise, but Rose was the smarter player. He was more controlled and in my opinion, he had a better understanding of the game. If you combine his basketball IQ with athleticism that rivals Westbrook, that would be insane. Of course, this is assuming he'd stay healthy for his entire career, which obviously did not happen. Recently, we've seen young players like DSJ and Colin Sexton get compared to Rose, which is saying a lot. They're also huge fans of Rose, which probably inspired their playstyle. Heck, DSJ was asked about who his top 5 all-time starting lineup would be, and he put Derrick Rose at point guard. Top 5 all-time? Uh, point guard. Point guard, I'll, play, I'll take Rose, Derrick Rose at the point. Michael Jordan at the 2. Over the years, he's been involved in a couple of controversial moments off the courts, getting accused of rape and randomly deciding to not show up for games, but he's still trying. He still loves basketball just as much as before, and for the past few years, he's been trying to improve and get better. After an orbital fracture in 2015, Rose had trouble with blurry vision and depth perception, so he developed a great bank shot. His work ethic has been questioned, but honestly, he's just been through so much. After the ankle injury with the Cavs, which didn't seem so bad, but it really hurt Rose mentally because it's like, every time he feels good he gets another injury. I don't blame him for leaving the team for a couple months, he was just really upset and disappointed at himself and his body. I saw a video recently that was really touching. Chinese fans made a video tribute to Rose saying how they still love him and how he's their favorite player. This was in 2017 by the way, long after his years of glory. In this video, Rose just broke down crying. You can tell he's never gonna give up on basketball. And it's obvious that he wants the exact same thing that his fans wants. To dominate the league once again. However, with his recent 50 point explosion, I think it's safe to say that Derrick Rose never lost the talent. He always had the explosiveness, the athleticism, everything was still there. It's just that his role has changed and he doesn't have the chance to show it that much anymore. And through all the injuries and all the surgeries, he cannot do it anymore on a nightly basis. He broke his career high in points during a time when everyone thought he was nothing more than just a role player. He's been doing better recently, but nobody could have expected this. That was just incredible. After the game, you could clearly see how emotional he was. He spends countless hours in the hospital, he spent countless hours in rehab, and he spent countless hours listening to people like us talk about if he could ever return back to form, back to prime Derrick Rose. There are thousands of theories and hundreds of videos on YouTube about what if Derrick Rose never got injured? Now, after scoring 50 points and breaking his career high, it's kind of a bittersweet moment. It's amazing for Rose, but for us, it's like, you know, this is what Rose should have been. Like, look at the way he moved on the court. He was doing all of his vintage crossovers, spin moves, attacking the rim at will, making great passes, great layups. It's amazing how he's still so talented and so good. And the crazy thing is, he was doing all of these things at just 22 years old. Now obviously he did not score 50 all the time back then, but his playstyle is still the exact same, except with a little bit more jump shots. For those who never had the chance to watch Derrick Rose in his prime, this was basically it. I know he won't be able to play like a superstar every single night, but just watching him play, we saw glimpses of prime Derrick Rose. For once in Rose's career, his future is looking bright. I know he's over 30 years old now, but I think he's going to be in for another big payday. If he can continue playing the same way for the rest of the season and for the next few years, he might even make an all-star team again in the future. Or at least he still has a chance to win 6th man of the year. That would still be very impressive, especially for a guy who went through so much during his career. So how good was Prime Derek Rose actually? Well, he was a top 5 player in the league, one of the most exciting players the NBA has ever seen. 
a guy who not only took the league by storm, but also inspired millions of people around the world. In my opinion, when D-Rose won that MVP, it introduced a new era in the NBA. An era dominated by point guards with a score-first mentality. A ton of teams now in the NBA have a point guard who's their primary scoring option, which breaks the idea of what the traditional position is supposed to do. Anyway, that's all folks, let me know your thoughts on Derrick Rose. Where do you think his career is headed? Obviously, his story is far from over. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and also a big shout out to my sponsors at catbeast.com. If you want to customize your own snapbacks and hats, visit the link in the description below. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.